All right, let's continue with 3.5 um, where we were interpreting standard deviation and we were, in, um, we were finding those um, ranges of numbers and the z-scores, right? So z-score, we'll use that formula. And we'll also work on finding these um, ranges that we've been talking about a little bit. So um, suppose the heights for all men has an average of 69.7. I used a mu because it's a population. And a standard deviation, sorry, these didn't translate. I'll fix them on the document, of 2.857 inches. And we want to find the expected height range. So this is not range, this is expected range. So this is a new definition. So the expected range, I actually told you it in the last video, I just didn't give a definition. And you can see it above. Where does most of the data fall? Most of the data falls within two standard deviations. So these two numbers actually represent my expected range. And when we interpret it, I think it will make more sense. So the expected range, write this down and box it, will be the mean plus or minus, plus or minus two standard deviations. So this is not range, this is expected range. And when we interpret it, I think it will make a lot of sense. So we're gonna take the mean, 69.7 plus or minus two times 2.857. And if you want the calculator to do this correctly, do the multiplication first. Otherwise, it might not understand your order of operations. Or you might type it incorrectly. So it'll be 69.7 plus or minus 5.714. I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Just like last time, I like to do the subtraction first and add. And I got 63.986 to 75.415. It's like those range of numbers we did when we said what percent of the data is within two standard deviations. So now what we know is most men will be within this range. Does that mean everyone is? No, it just means most. And let's check with the histogram. So 63. 61, 62, 63. So 63.9 is maybe right there. 75.4 is maybe right there. So we're saying most men are in this range, which makes sense, right? Is that everyone? No, but it's most. So the expected range for a randomly selected man is anything between 63.986 and 75.415 inches. Again, that means most men are in this height range, not all. Statistics is really about describing what we expect or, and we're not always right. And so that's why we say most, right? Not all. It's very hard to describe everyone. Expected range will always be two. So, it, and that's coming from the 90 to 100. All right, let's try a couple more examples and then we're done with this chapter. So suppose someone, um, some person has the average number of visa purchase per day is 3.59. I'm going to say that's mu because it's probably, if we're only describing that person, they're the population. So on average, they're spending like three and a half purchases per day on their credit card and a standard deviation of 2.81. And so then the credit card company might be like, wow, they made 12 purchases today. Is that suspicious? So would it be considered unusual if they made 12 purchases? So that's my X value. And so this is how one way credit cards can determine fraud, right? They have lots of other patterns they're looking at, but they're looking at this as well, right? They also would probably look at the amount of the purchase and where, but number of purchase, purchases could also be suspicious. So anytime I see unusual, I like to find the z-score. So we're going to take the data value, take away the mean, and divide by standard deviation. So 12 minus 3.59 all over 2.81. 
So add parentheses or do it in two steps. So here it is with parentheses, and then here it is in two steps. Oops, I typed subtraction. 2.99, and then that runs up to 3. And then is this considered unusual? We can go back. Yep, it's past 2, right? It would be right here. It's closer to 3. Anything past 2 is unusual. So yes, it would be unusual. More than two standard deviations from the mean. That's how I would explain it. All right, so let's kind of go backwards. It'll be a little bit of algebra practice and formula. So now we know that the z-score is negative 1.278. How many purchases did they make? So in terms of the formula, we're just going to solve for x, which that would be the number of purchases. Negative z-scores just mean less than average. So z-scores can be negative. It just means less than average rather than more. But let's actually calculate that. So we'll plug in the z-score. We don't know x. The mean was 3.59 and sigma was 2.81. And so just a little algebra, we multiply both sides by 2.81. Let's pull out the calculator. 2.81 times negative 1.278 negative 3.59118 equals x minus 3.59. We're not going to do too much algebra in this class, but solving linear equ equations on rare. Linear equations on occasion. And so then to solve this, we add 3.59. So that cancels out. We add it to both sides. So we add 3.59 to that result. And I would say that's basically zero, right? Because purchases has to be a, a number anyway, a whole number. So about zero purchases. And that makes sense. That's less than the average of 3.59. So the z-score of negative 1.278 tells me that the person made zero purchases. All right, let's do one more example. Um, expected range, does anybody remember the formula? Or do you remember the formula? Remember that would be the mean plus or minus two standard deviations because most of the data is within two. So I'm gonna write this out because that'll help us remember the formula better. I get sick of spelling out standard deviations so I will abbreviate it sometimes. So we're gonna take the average of 3.59 plus or minus 2 times, was it 2.81. And this tells us where most of the data lays, lies. Um, it tells us how many purchases are considered usual versus unusual. So we're going to do 2 times 2.81. So sometimes on the calculator, we go out of order on paper, right? We're following order of operations. Multiplication comes first. And then we do 3.59 minus that number and 3.59 plus that number. And I can show you, if you want to try other ways on the calculator, I'll show you in a second. Um, we're going to change these numbers in a second. If you want to type everything at once, so... You can do 3.59 minus 2 times 2.81. That'll work. You'll see I'm getting the same numbers. You just have to type everything at once. The most common mistake I see people do is they just go in order of the paper. So they do plus 2, enter, and then times by 2.81. So that's breaking order of operations. So you either need to type everything at once or you need to do order of operations. And order of operations tells me multiplication comes first.
But what's nice about having these graphing calculators is we can do everything at once. They're smart enough to figure it out. Cool. Um, but we're talking about visa purchases. So let's look at a number line. So negative 2.03 is my cutoff. 9.21 is my cutoff. So we can't really make negative purchases. So negative one, zero. So I'm probably going to start at zero, right? That's the first number that makes sense for purchases. And then we can't make a decimal of a purchase. So we'll stop at nine. So zero to nine purchases per day. That's expected range. So it would be normal for this person to make purchases anywhere from zero to nine. And so I rounded because it's a discrete variable. So for discrete data, we consider the smallest and largest that fall within the boundaries, right? Purchases is discrete. For continuous data, we usually word, use the word between, and we don't need to round. So continuous data would be like the men's heights, right? It can be any decimal. But for discrete data, we'll round. So another example for discrete could be, let's say we got 1.1, this is just an example, 1.1 .1 to 9.9. .9. So I think most of you want to round that from nine to 10. Let me tell you why that's wrong. So it has to be within the range of numbers. Does one make the cutoff? It's so close, but it doesn't make the cutoff. Does 10 make the cutoff? Nope, just barely makes it. So 9.9 .9 is the absolute max. So in terms of discrete data, nine is the largest it could be. And two is the large, smallest it could be. So we'd say two to nine. So that's what I mean by within the boundaries. All right, let's just finish it up with our final example. So a supermarket has 10 registers open. Each register has its own line, right? So when you go to Safeway, usually there's more than one line rather than a single line. And you um, pick a line and just kind of hope for the best. At the electronics store, there's 10 registers, but you get in a single line and they just call you up, right? We've probably seen the difference at stores. Um, so the wait times at the supermarket have an average of 5.7 and a standard deviation of 3.270. So the supermarket, I'll do an orange. And then the electronics store has a larger average at 8.75, but a smaller standard deviation at 1.5. Seven, four. Oops. So let's see how those compare in terms of z-scores. So let's find um, the z-score for the line if it's over 12 minutes. And the reason I want the z-score is that'll tell me if it's unusual. So we will do 12 minutes minus the average of 5.7 all over 3.207. I'll write the formula out just in case you still need it. Um, you don't necessarily need to memorize this formula, but we're going to use it so much, you'll probably just memorize it anyway. Um, so we'll do 12 minus 5.7, and I get 6.3. Divide by 3.207. And remember, z-scores are three decimal places, 1.964. So is that unusual? No, because it's within two, it's less than two, right? Ah, sorry about the zoom. Within two standard deviations of the mean. Right, we've probably waited in really long lines at the supermarket before. And so 12 minutes seems reasonable to me. I mean, it doesn't seem reasonable, but it seems like, yeah, it could happen. Um, so it is something that could easily happen at the grocery store even though the average is only 5.7. And that has to do with the standard deviation being so large. What about at the electronics store? 12 minutes, would it be unusual? So we'll do 12, we'll do minus 8.75. 
So the mean is much larger here, um, but the standard deviation is smaller. So we're gonna do 12 minus 8.75. I get 3.25 and divide by 1.574. And I got 2.065. And so, yeah, it actually would be unusual here because it's, again, it's more than two. More than two standard deviations from the mean. Right, the mean represents a z-score of zero. And so this really is telling us that even though the average is bigger, the standard deviation is, has a big play in the wait time. So if having individual lines, let's just kind of compare the two situations. If having two individual lines at a register and having one single line is known to have the same average wait time, so pretend the average is the same, why would we want a single line? So what is the advantage of having a single line over multiple lines? So I think it's related to the standard deviation. So having a single line has a smaller standard deviation. And let's relate that to everyday life. Um, meaning wait times have less variation. So what does that mean? Less variation means the line is more predictable, more consistent, right? Those are things we like. Versus like the at Safeway, right? Sometimes you go to Safeway and you're in and out in two seconds. Other times you're waiting in line for like 20 minutes. That's not consistent. Consistent means you wait in line for five minutes every time or like five to six minutes. Um, people like consistency or things that we can predict rather than just totally random wait times and we have no idea. Cool. So that's three, five. Um...